Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to do a different kind of problem called verifying the identity. When they ask you to verify the identity, what they're asking you to do is to take what they gave you here, the equation, and show that the left side indeed equals the right side. We're trying to show that this is indeed a true equation. And so what we want to do is either start with the left side and the right side, or the right side, manipulate the left side, change it completely until the left side looks like the right side, or start with the right side, manipulate this until the right side looks like the left side. So that's what we're trying to do. So in this case, let's start with the left side and manipulate it until it looks like that side. And what I'm going to do here is multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. That may be a good thing to do, and let's see what happens when we do that. So we have 1 minus the sine of x divided by 1 plus the sine of x, and we'll multiply that times 1 minus the sine of x divided by 1 minus the sine of x. Okay? So we assume that that will eventually look like that, even though it doesn't look like that at all right now. When we do that, in the numerator, we have, uh, when we multiply this out, we get 1 minus 2 times the product of those two, which is 2 times the sine of x plus the sine squared of x. And if we multiply the denominator, notice that when you multiply a binomial with its conjugate, the middle term drops out, so we end up with 1 minus the sine squared of x. Now, 1 minus the sine squared of x, that's equal to the cosine squared of x. Remember this identity, that the sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x equals 1. So if we then move the sine to the other side, we say that the cosine squared of x equals 1 minus the sine squared of x. Doesn't look very, very good, but let me rewrite that so it looks a little better. Sine, I'm trying to write a little bit too fast here. Okay, so we can then replace that by 1 minus 2 times the sine of x plus the sine squared of x, all divided by the cosine squared of x. All right. Let's see here. What we can do next, because I'm trying to make it look like that. Um, hmm. Well, you know what? It might be better not to have done this in the first place. So sometimes you don't realize that you may not want to do something. I'm going to go back and rewrite this as simply the product of those two. So let's try that. So instead of writing this, I'm going to go back this way and say, well, this is equal to, how about the equal sign over there, how about 1 minus the sine of x quantity squared divided by the cosine of x quantity squared, like that. And then I'm going to divide the denominator into the numerator. So this can be written as 1 over the cosine of x minus the sine of x over the cosine of x and the whole thing squared. And now if I use my identities where 1 over the cosine of x is equal to the secant of x, so this can now be written as the secant of x, minus in the sine divided by the cosine is a tangent of x, and the whole thing is squared, then I look over here and I have the exact same thing as I have over there on the right side. So that's how I proved that the left side equals the right side. Now, there's another good lesson here. Notice that you don't always know exactly where you want to go or what you're trying to do. Don't be afraid. Don't sit there and go, well, if I don't know for sure what I'm going to do, I'm not going to go any further. Just try something. And in this case, I did something that was counterproductive. I realized that that's what's not going to get me over where I wanted to go. So I went back and said, okay, I can simply write this like this instead. Now I can divide this into that. And then it looks exactly like that. So sometimes it's a exercise of trial and error until you get to where you want to go. So there's a good example for you.